it's been a long day and the team, I'm sure, could do with a rest. We're spending the night at the Springs 4x4 park, which we'll explore a lot more of in the morning. But tonight, we've got one more special track in store. So, we've booked in, dropped off some gear and are racing the sun to a romantic little spot called Love Hill. Oh boys, I think this is going to be a nice sunset. We're heading up to Love Hill. This is going to be a cracker. I, uh, I'm not often thankful for bushfires, but they are making a spectacular view right now. Those are the cactus too. It's so, it's just awesome man. It's just a different environment, isn't it? We're popping up here and it is just, I mean, where are we, Mexico? <laughs> Campione del Moyete, it's got those kind of vibes. See that little clearing in the dust? Oh, how good is this? This is uh, this is why we do four-wheel driving for a living, I think, for views like this. Oh my goodness, that is specky. And get a load of that view. I think I'm developing an addiction to beautiful sunsets. Ah oh, well, <laughs> there are worse things in life. What a lucky way to end our day. It's almost like we planned it. A new day, and we're waking up at the Springs 4x4 Park, tucked in between Warwick and Stanthorpe in southern Queensland. On our adventure from Brisbane to Sydney on the dirt. Gentlemen, we have free reign of this entire park for the day. What do you want to do? I saw there's quite a few steep tracks and things around and I haven't done, I haven't got too much experience on them. So I thought if you could show me a little bit of um, how to do that. No worries mate, some steep inclines, there is plenty of those. Yeah, no, I think we'll, we'll hook into that because that is just what this place is built for, isn't it? Um, I'm still on highway pressures, I think you guys are too. What do you want to drop into? I actually think, given the difficulty of the tracks here, I reckon we might actually just drop them to 15 to start with and have a go at that. I'll still get bogged, but... <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. OK. So, with some air knocked out of the tyres, we're ready to hit the dirt. This will be one of Odell's first real tests on challenging terrain. I'm keen to see how he goes, but I don't want to throw him in the deep end. So, we're starting with a nice little challenge. Okay, gentlemen, I think I might have found our first hill. This is called Rattus Run. Okay, Odell, what do you think, mate? You think we can do this? Yeah, let's give it a go. Okay, mate, well, the first thing is prepping your vehicle. So we've dumped the tyre pressures, so we're good there. Um, but the next thing is we want to um, pop it into low range for this because you want plenty of control. So we're going to use the gearing of the vehicle uh, to, to give us lots of control over these rocks. All right, so it's in neutral, popping it into full low now. Good stuff. The other thing that you do on these inclines, uh, or any rocky terrain, is uh, to keep your thumbs on the outside of the steering wheel, because sometimes uh, if you hit a rock the wrong way, it can actually spin the steering wheel really quickly, and uh, four-wheel drivers have been known to break their thumbs on occasion. Quick question before you start. Should I uh, use one the dial to turn up to a certain mode or just keep it in foil? Not for this one, mate. So um, this is more just, you just want total control over the vehicle and um, uh, low range. But we might also activate the rear differential lock as well. Engaged. Okay, now I'm just gonna, um, you can stay there, Josh, but I'm just gonna back off a touch so I can pick my line. Because picking your line is kind of important in this sort of terrain and um, I'm going to take a left hand line up here because I'm going to try and keep all my tyres on the ground. So I'm going to basically start on the left and then head towards the centre of the track and try and miss that rock on the left. And off we go, nice and slow. A little bit of a bump and grind up there, mate, but we made it. Nicely driven, mate. That uh, Outback Armour was flexing up nicely. 
Let's see how the mighty Raptor goes. The standard vehicle. Helps if you pick the right line on these ones. A little bit of a love tap on the side step there, but that's to be expected because I'm driving. Nice, oh, Joshy. Hey, Pat, would you hate me if I said I was a little nervous on this one? Pat's out of the vehicle, mate, but I won't hate you. <laughs> good. So on tracks like this, it's always good if you're a novice to have a spotter come down, so that's exactly what Pat's gonna do. He's gonna grab a handheld, he's gonna tell Odell where to put the wheels, which holes to avoid, and uh, we're gonna idle them up, and it's gonna be a cracking view. Okay, Odell, bring her up, mate. What we're gonna try and do is just stick hard left for you, and then we're gonna try and sneak between the two obstacles here. So this nice chunky rock and, uh, and that one over there. So hard left and then a bit of hard right. Let's bring her up. Talk me through, mate. Okay, that's a good line. That's it, keep it on that line. Beautiful, start to bring her around to the right now. That's it, gentle on the throttle. Good line, keep it going there. Just coming over a little rock, a bit more throttle. And, mate, you're doing it well. Perfect line. A little bit of right hand down. And let the diff lock do the walking, that's it. And left hand down, and just climb on up. Mate, you have smashed it. <laughs> Thanks, Pat, that was good. Well done, mate. Great job for a first timer. Now, often when you're out of the tracks, you will see people leaping up, revving their engines massively, and that's not really the sign of a good four wheel driver. A good four wheel driver is mechanically sympathetic to their vehicle. They want to go as slow as they possibly can because they know that their vehicle will then last a lot longer. You see, if you use too much throttle up these hills, what happens is you pop a wheel way up off the deck and then when it comes down it grabs traction but that causes a massive shock load right through the drive line and you then have major major issues with things like CV joints so you just got to be as slow as you possibly can and as fast as you need to be. The tracks just don't seem to stop here we're already on the next challenge and it looks bumpy. Alrighty, so let's have a crack at hardcore climb. And right at the bottom, you've got these beautiful big wombat holes. So the funny thing is you could drive for thousands of kilometers and never find obstacles like this in the real world, I suppose. But out here at the Springs, they have built this as a four-wheel driver's playground. So you can play to your heart's content, lift your wheels and tires, do it again and again, and this is what this place is built for. Now, further up the top of this hill is a proper winch section. I'm talking massive rocks, big drop-offs. I'm not gonna have a go at that, largely because this is the first of eight episodes of this season, and I don't wanna do any carnage to my vehicle on episode one. And that, I think, is part of the secret source of four-wheel driving. You want to actually know when to say no, when not to do that water crossing, when not to do that hill climb, when you might sustain damage, because if you can get your eye in, then it's gonna save you a whole lot of coin and a whole lot of heartache. The tracks here are outstanding and everything is nicely condensed so you can experience a variety of trails all within a short drive of each other. And here's something I didn't expect, a nice stretch of bull dust. Well, we're on the way to another track and boy oh boy, <laughs> we have hit some bull dust. And this is just the tracks around this property, the variety is, is really something special. This is, this is fun. It's like being back in the top end. Lucas is one of the owners of the Springs 4x4 park. He's a much loved larrikin of the 4x4 scene. So I wanted to get the lowdown on how this place really started. So Lucas, you've been here for a few years, mate. What makes a guy want to buy a four wheel drive park? 
Well, mate, I've been in the uh, four-wheel drive industry for a very, very long time. Have a big passion for four-wheel driving and off-roading and spending time with quality people like yourself, mate. <laughs> so, someone comes, they've never been here before, what's, what's on offer? Hey, we've got tracks that cater for everybody from a RAV4 all the way up to a, you know, a very, very well set up, you know, capable truck with lockers and the whole lot. Um, flush toilets, hot showers, great campsites, you know, awesome views. The views here are just stunning. Um, the infamous Beer O'Clock Hill and um, yeah, beautiful waterfall positions like we're at right now. Now mate, this waterfall is, a, it is also a four wheel drive challenge, isn't it? This is the gatekeeper of Battle Axe Gorge. So this is the most hardest, difficult track in the park. So, you, you know, you've got to be prepared to cop a little bit of damage. Um, so I, like a Prado or a 300 Land Cruiser, you certainly wouldn't bring it here. But um, yeah, if you want to test your machine and your skill, this is where you do it. Right, right, okay. Because we're such a dense, um, like a smaller park, you might say, Everything's just within reach of main camp. Like it's just a short distance. You can walk, you can drive. And folks, he's a qualified mechanic too. So if you do happen to have a little bit of an oopsie and blow a CV, he can sort you out as well and get you on the road back home. Mate, fantastic property. And uh, I am really enjoying myself absolutely just cruising around your beautiful tracks. Some of the views on those upper peaks, Absolutely gorgeous and a credit to you and the family for, for uh, what you've done with the place. Yeah, thanks Pat, really appreciate that mate and um, I can't wait just to show you around a little bit more. Awesome. And we can't wait to see it. So tell me fellas, most surprising thing about the Springs 4x4 park so far? Mate, every direction we look we are graced by another fantastic track. This is uh, more than just raw and real, there is something here for everyone. It's really a place where I can put these skills that you're teaching me, Pat, to, you know, straight to, straight to use. Yeah, it's funny, a lot of four-wheel drive parks, you think um, <laughs> they can be not built for looks, but built for, uh, built for action, and this place has a bit of both. It's got the, you know, the two personalities of, yeah, if you want it to be hardcore and, and uh, you know, getting down and dirty, it's got that. If you want a mud run, if you want a rock climb, go for it. But it's also got the, the killer views and the beautiful camping. So it's, um, yeah, that, it's such a, such a beautiful, rare mix. And our next challenge, or should I say Odell's next challenge, requires us to make a fleeting daytime visit back up Love Hill. Nice to see it during the day. I still think I prefer it at sunset though. It is such a surreal experience driving through a forest of prickly pears and then up the top of Love Hill. This is just absolutely gorgeous. It's a little bit hazy out there at the moment because there are bushfires and smoke from those bushfires uh, around us, but it doesn't stop the sheer spectacularity. I think I've made up a word there of this area. And this isn't even the highest point. That is where we're headed. We're headed to Bald Knob. And it's just over there a bit. For this climb, I thought I should take the opportunity to throw Odell in the passenger seat and give him a little bit of driving instruction. Okay, mate, well, I thought I would take you through a few obstacles and maybe talk you through it. Yeah, as you can see, I'm ready. <laughs> oh. Don't, don't get annoyed if my arm comes across and I jump the seat, mate. <laughs> oh, we've already rubbed the belly and we're only just into it. So the key with a lot of this sort of technical stuff is you just got to do it super slow because you want everything to sort of happen in slow motion, I suppose. Okay. And uh, you already lean on the side and I'm hanging on for grim death. <laughs> but you're actually showing a lot of control, which I didn't, you know, didn't even think about. <laughs> oh, a nice little wheel up. The Ranger does it easy, so see how slow you can do those sort of obstacles? Yeah, right. You just don't need to hammer them and the car just goes, yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. So you're letting it do the hard work, you're letting the differential lock push you through, you're letting the traction control push you through, and it's kind of simple. That's quite interesting you say that because I've, I've never been through that slow, and I'm normally searching for a bit of of gas and that's the beginner number one mistake they go geez you know what's oh, i need some throttle here you feel like you're gonna go backwards so you go 
that's it that's it but you do that and then you're spinning things up you're breaking things yeah, yeah. so so this is uh, yeah nice and slow is probably the number one tip that wasn't nearly as terrifying as I thought it was gonna be thank you <laughs> that's all right mate we've got plenty more terrifying <laughs> stuff to come time to start our ascent it's gonna get a lot more bumpy from here on out so what we're aiming for here mate is to keep the tires on the ground all the time so you're really just trying to make it the, as easy as possible for your four-wheel drive. It doesn't doesn't look as fancy from the outside if you're trying to get a, a wonderful photo or something, but uh, it makes it easier on your on your drive line of your four-wheel drive. So all four tyres on the ground. What's the excuse for the last thing we did then? <laughs> that was a photo opportunity. <laughs> How do you choose a line path? Well, it's it's really just trying to picture the underbody of your four-wheel drive and, and, and your tyres and, and just, just trying to stay on that track. And it does change depending on where you are. So when this track is really dry like it is today, I'm staying on the high side of things. Yep. If the track is, is really wet, I'm wanting to stay in those wheel ruts to stop my vehicle from sliding off the side of the track. So you, it changes depending on the complexion of the track, I suppose, because the beauty of those tram tracks, I suppose, that are going up the guts of the trail means that uh, they're not going to let you slide off and into the scrub. Yeah, okay. So you really only can go forward or back on them, right? Exactly. Intuitive, yeah. 100%. We've just come out of the ruts and we're into a bit more sort of um, loose little boulders and things. Have you had to change your dial into a different mode or anything? No, mate. I'm still just low range and um, <laughs> leaving it in auto, basically. So I've got the rear locker on. And, uh, and off we go. So we'll see how far we get up here because it's looking. This is pretty steep. It's looking super scrubbly. Oh man! <laughs> we'll give it a crack. Oh, let's see. We're grinding up. It's a no-go on that line. Time to try another. So it's okay to reverse down when you're, when you're quite steep. It is, mate, it is. We've got, um, we've got hill descent control on this vehicle, even in reverse. So now we're coming up to a little rock shelf. We'll see how we go. Oh, yes. <laughs> Made it up that one, mate. So they're surprisingly capable, aren't they? Yeah, they are surprisingly capable. <laughs> this is pretty inclined. What well, we'll just say this, this is probably. Okay, let's see if we, we're still grinding, we're grinding. The Coopers are grabbing. Oh boy. <laughs> we are right on the edge of traction here, mate. This is uh, probably you know, up around the 40 degree mark. Yeah. I'm not driving this one, bud. <laughs> and I'm gonna stay on the high side. Oh, or am I? No. Hang on a second. Cruise control up here now. Mate, I tell you what, it's lucky I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. See, that's surprising, you know. You, I did not see that coming there. That little little bit of wheel spin. And is that just because it's loose? A lot of tracks can be a little bit hard hard to read, basically. They, um, yeah, you don't always know when, when you're gonna get traction. So you just have another bite at the cherry, really. You go, oh, okay. And the key when you get into a little bind like this is to, don't do the same thing again. So yeah. what a lot of people do is they just keep on making the same mistake twice, three times. And and uh, so we've got to change something. So we've got to change the line. We've got to change our throttle. Yeah. We've got to change something. You know, you might want to put another diff lock in if you've got one. We don't, we've just got the one. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll have another go just with a little bit more throttle and see how we go. And just leapt over that. So, so sometimes throttle does help, but um, I don't like making that my very first option. So there you go, mate. We've uh, we have done it. We've made it uh, up the top of that little gnarly incline. <laughs> Good fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, somewhat fun. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was, I was. I don't think I'm going to do that one, man. Is that right? That's absolutely fine, mate. And I I wouldn't recommend it to be honest. So that bit where we started losing traction there, I would have panicked and done it. And but seeing you so calm um was really eye-opening but a quick question you know how we were bouncing and stuff is there any ever a possibility of hitting it and 
going backwards. There is. It's a pretty unlikely thing, but it can happen because when you think about it, if you hit a rock while you're going up a hill and you're lifting all that engine weight up, it's got to go somewhere. And if that car is unbalanced, so if your yeah. back right drops into a hole at the same time, that's when people can have big problems. So that it's another reason to, to, to do things nice and slow and steady because if you're keeping it slow, you can't really, the, the car won't leap up. Yeah, okay. So you got to be mindful of your accessories as well and where you place them. Yeah, on your vehicle. Yeah, it's about having a well-balanced vehicle. And uh, I mean, on these cars, we've even emptied them out a little bit just, yeah. to, just to do this sort of drive. But there's a myriad of things that can happen when you're you're driving too hard and fast. So you're more likely to pop tires off the bead. Yeah. Imagine trying to change a tire on that. <laughs> Not fun, you know. You're more likely to bust the CV joint. You're more likely for the car to leap up and roll off the track. Yeah. You know. So there's there's all these things that. They look good in photos and, and it's, you know and video and all that sort of stuff, but you know you might be subjecting yourself to a lot of danger that you just don't need. Yeah, and it's an investment, right? Well, my four-wheel drive is an investment. Mate, and that's the whole philosophy of this show is is showing people stuff that they can drive on Sunday and then they can drive that same car home on Monday, you know, to, or, right. or back to work on Monday. That's so. right. If you do break a CV joint there. Do you, will it keep going up or are you stuck now? Oh, you basically, you, you're reverting back to sort of two-wheel drive. So you've got, a, you've got a problem there. You've got to either fix it on the track or, or winch yourself up onto an area where you can start to, to actually fix the mechanics. Right, okay. So, so you've got to winch and that's when the recovery stuff comes into play. That's it, mate. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so a winch is like a, a safety blanket. You're all good. I could do that with a winch, you reckon? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> Plus you got a hundred and something kilo in the front, so we wait down at the front, baby. <laughs> That's it. Okay, grasshopper. <laughs> I'm going to trust my ranger in your capable hands. I think you're ready. Oh, all right. You sure you trust me? Only if you call me Sensei. <laughs> well, Sensei's my name, but okay. Sensei Pat. Sensei Pat. Okay. What sensei, if I get this one, will you give me another black belt? <laughs> Absolutely, mate. <laughs> black belt in, belt in full driving, wouldn't that be something? Well, oh. Maybe just give me a white with a couple stripes. Okay. Alright, so into D? Into D, mate, and she's all locked so up in, in the mode. Yep, all in the modes are, uh, are good. We've got the rear diff lock on. And I reckon the best bet up here is just to stick to the left of the track. It looks pretty smooth. So go this way. Alright. Yep. Well, you're talking me through this one, Sensei. No worries, mate. Just so nice and gentle on the throttle. That's beautiful. Now with that throttle, can I just keep it where it is and just like let it catch? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So a bit of a side slope here, but that's fine. <laughs> that's absolutely fine. Oh yeah, it doesn't feel that fine. <laughs> you're right. That's it. See, we're not we're not rolling. Yeah. It's a long way down. But it's getting used to those sensations, isn't it? In, uh, yeah. Knowing that, oh, okay, we didn't roll. Okay, we're good. And, and that's that's the beauty of this. It's a, you know, this whole property, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we've got a few wombat holes up here. So we want to try and straddle those holes. So really what you want to do is picture your line through that track. Can I go back and, a little bit? Um, yeah, no, and that's a great idea. So you go back and... Because um, now I can't see. And the other option too, especially for beginners is to um, have a spotter out the front that goes left hand down, right hand down and just okay. tell, tell, talks you through it. But On the radio. See where that rock is there the, in the middle of the track. The first hole. Yeah, that's it. So you don't want to, you, you'd want to, um, actually I reckon we can go straight over the top of that and then we'll sort of straddle the wombat holes rather than going right through them. Okay, so it's like, to, it's like you go over a speed bump in a low car. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> All right, gotcha. I've done that a few times, so we're right. <laughs> so a little bit of left hand down. That's yeah. it. Now a bit of right. A bit more right hand down. That's it. I think that's pretty good. A bit more right hand down. There's another wombat hole under there. And my rear's going to fall into it. Uh, you're right. Just keep on feeding that throttle in. It's okay. Yep, and now just um, pretty much straight up the guts of this, mate. You can go a little bit left. That's it. Beautiful. That's it. And you can see the left hand side of the track, so it's a little bit easier. So keep feeding the throttle in. 
fast and steady. <laughs> well done. The big man. Yeah, mate, you smashed it. You smashed it. Off the edge. Where are we going? Oh, let's go and point over to the middle, mate, and soak up this view. Bald knob. <laughs> 360 degree views. Holy. Wow. Look at it. How good is this? Let's go up to this edge here. That is a stunning view and a great reward for a uh, fantastic lesson, mate. I wouldn't have done that without you. Uh, mate, Thanks very much. My pleasure, mate. My pleasure. It is uh, good fun. You're a bloody good student. A great drive from Odell and what a view. I'm sure he'll be back here very soon in his own Forby. To cap off the day, we get to tackle the infamous Springs Test Track. As the owner of the park and the bloke who built the track, it's no surprise that Lucas makes it through like an absolute champion. Pity the same can't be said for old Patsky. Bellying out on the test track, how embarrassing. <laughs> but we've got to get out of here and try as we might, we haven't been able to drive out or even get out with the exit track. So we're using a bit of a combo here. So we're going to use the Raptor as our anchor point down there. So Josh, mate, if you want to um, hook that guy up. And uh, single line pull. So this is really as simple as winching gets, but we are using a little bit of an advantage here with the exit tracks because they're just going to give us a little bit of height that brings the nose up and gets that belly off the ground and stops us really skull dragging our vehicle over the hump here. So we'll give it a go. When you're doing a any sort of winch recovery. Uh, firstly, you've got to make sure the engine's actually running. So I've just sent Josh back there to kick the car over because your winch is always being powered off the starter battery of the four wheel drive. So it's really important that it stays powered up and gets fed those amps. Now, we're gonna hook her up here. These, uh, these recovery points on the Raptor are thankfully rated at um, four ton, so um, they should take this load really well. And the other important thing is our cable dampener here. Thank you, mate. And uh, we're gonna put that closest to the metal projectile end. <laughs> so, so this is where things could potentially go wrong. So it just creates a little bit of a, an air break if, uh, if this thing goes wrong, but you really don't wanna trust anything uh, like this to, to actually save you. So you, you want to make sure that all the bystanders are well and truly away from any recovery situation like this. Now, when we do up our shackle, we do it up all, all the way and then back it off just a quarter of a turn and that stops it binding up. Okay, mate, if you can uh, stand on the brakes there so I don't pull you backwards, all clear and winching. So what I'm doing here in the Raptor now is just sitting with uh, the rear wheels in a bit of a divot to stop going back, got my foot on the brake and the transmission in neutral just to stop any torque load up on there. And uh, I can feel the pressure coming on now. So it should be golden and in a few moments I suspect Pat will be well and truly unstuck. And over we go. So we didn't need too much help there, but we are over our obstacle at the Springs 4x4 Park.